Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to this episode of our show. This is your host, Keith Doherty. Today, our special guest is top real estate agent James W. Bates of Premier Sotheby's International Realty based out of Naples, Florida. Recognized as one of the top producing leaders in the Naples real estate market, James has established an impressive reputation for listing and selling the very finest luxury real estate properties in the area. He currently ranks in the top 1% of all realtors in Naples for sales and has been consistently recognized with prestigious awards for his achievements. Originally from England, his background in real estate development and historic renovation teamed with his enthusiasm for unusual and luxurious homes has given him the crucial edge in real estate production in the area. His recent notable success includes selling the historic Addison Meisner beachfront estate for an old Naples record breaking $16 million. Shortly thereafter, he negotiated the second most expensive sale at $13,500,000. And he also sold the highest priced single family home on Marco Island since 2008 at $6.4 million. He has built his brand at Premier Sotheby's and cemented his reputation as a confidant to luxury home sellers and buyers alike who demand discreet, uncompromising client confidentiality, exceptional service, product knowledge, and extraordinary results. All right, with all that said, James, welcome to the show. Keith, thank you for having me on your show. It's uh, a pleasure. Yeah, James, certainly a, a pleasure to have you here today. And I guess if we could start for our listeners, what led you into real estate? Was it something that you always knew you wanted to do, or did you maybe stumble into it? Um, well, absolutely. I've, I've always had a passion for properties, design, and architecture. Um, before I moved to the U.S. 10 years ago, my background was in historic renovation. I used to purchase um, historic properties, redesign and sell. So my background was really buying and selling properties in the UK. Um, then when I arrived in the US in sort of late 2006, it was really with a sort of desire to pick up from there and uh, purchase properties, redesign them uh, and sell them. However, at that time, the market was pretty difficult, so I sort of diversified more into the selling side of things. Excellent. Well, uh, James, can you talk a little bit about what personal attributes, traits, or qualities you think have most contributed to the success that you've had in real estate? Really, for me, it's, it's always about the clients. I kind of truly care that they find the home that really best suits them. It's not always about the sale. Hopefully, I can make buyers feel comfortable and not under pressure. For buyers, really, there's no time scale. Every buyer is really different. Some immediately see what they like and, and sort of jump on it. Others like to take the time. And so, really, I just like to be sort of non-pressure. Other attributes, really, um, my background in development has sort of been a huge, a huge advantage for sellers. Kind of it allows me to... Um, sort of understand the complications and costs that go into custom homes. And it makes me makes it kind of easy for me to sort of pass this on when representing the homes on the market. Uh, the buyers, uh, they kind of find it uh, reassuring that I understand the quality construction methods and really rely on my opinion, good or bad, as to whether they should, should buy the home. My sort of passion for architecture design is pretty crucial I think it kind of makes what I do every day it's kind of exciting and fresh I, I love pass, passing on my passion to clients many of them really kind of share the same interest as well so it's always interesting dealing with that and, and James uh, kind of on top of that could you give our listeners an example of when these traits have played a role in your path toward success um, absolutely um, I, I've built up a good number of development and investment clients um, who obviously once they've purchased a property have used me to supervise with the design and construction projects and that's really been something they found very helpful in the process. And I guess 
um, whenever somebody has success, it's not always a quick and easy road. There's sometimes bumps in the road as, as they're getting there. Can you talk a little bit about some of the adversities or trials that you had to overcome in order to achieve your goals? For me, really, it's about timing. Uh, there really couldn't have been a worse time for me to arrive in the U.S. and start a career in real estate than in sort of late 2006. Obviously, the market crashed around me. It seemed like everyone was a realtor and no one was selling anything at the time. So it was obviously very difficult. Sellers seemed to be in denial on prices and buyers had virtually disappeared from the market. That and really the fact that I arrived into Naples, really not knowing anyone in the area. So it was it was starting really from the beginning, really from scratch. And it was a pretty, pretty terrible time at the time. But uh, however, in, in hindsight, it was probably worked out to be the best sort of time for training. I mean, really, if you can survive during those years, you really come out stronger at the end of it. So... I feel it bad time to, to start that worked out to be an absolute benefit in the end, I feel. I feel. Excellent. And, James, I guess, you know, what, what kept you going uh, despite these obstacles? You know, why didn't you give up what you're driving for? I don't like giving up, basically. I'm, I'm fairly driven. Um, once I start something, I have to do it to really the best of my abilities to to get the job done and get it achieved. and. Basically, after leaving the UK, there was really no way I was going to be able to head back and probably explain to my friends what went wrong. Plus, the weather in Naples was too good to really pack up and leave. So it was a case of having to get it done. Um, there was really no alternative. I was also fortunate. I met some very good people who supported me, introduced me to friends, who then soon really became clients. So it, it, things, things worked out very well in the end. And I guess um, looking forward, what, what's your vision for your business and your career say, over the next five years? Really my, my vision is, is to continue on the sort of same path and to just to, to, to continue to grow my client base. I, I really enjoy what I do. I, I'm p passionate and I love real estate. Um, I'm fortunate to meet the people I meet every day an exciting business. Real estate's really always changing and each market brings sort of new exciting challenges. So really to continue doing what I'm doing and, and hopefully continue to grow my business with new clients and, and their friends as well. And I guess kind of on top of that, uh, what do you feel is the best way that you market yourself as a real estate professional so that you can have continual growth? Without a doubt, the best way to market is through recommendations from past clients. Uh, you can you could spend thousands on advertising, but a simple referral from a buyer or a seller really speaks volumes. Really, if you look after your existing clients, it, it really does pay dividends in the end. And, James, I think sometimes when uh, people look at real estate agents, uh, they have a certain uh, perception of what they think they do or they don't do, uh, the value they really provide um, from both a, a buyer and a seller standpoint. Um, so what do you think the biggest misconception or myth people have about working with a real estate agent? I think the biggest misconception may be that by contacting a realtor, you're, you're almost going to some sort of pressure selling um, just you know, really should not be the case. A realtor should be able to adapt and understand their client's needs. Another misconception may, may be that sellers and buyers could save money by acting for themselves. It's really not always the case. I've seen many for sale by owners' properties selling below market value uh, with, with sellers really not understanding what the current market is and pricing the property too low. And let's say you get a call from a uh, either a family member or they're a friend, and, and they're in another state, and they uh, they want to sell their home. Now, obviously, being with Sotheby's, you could easily probably look up another agent or do a referral, but from a general advice standpoint, what advice would you give them about selecting an agent that could best serve their needs? 
I would definitely recommend, obviously, driving around the neighbourhood to see who is the specialist in the area, picking one or two names, and then do some research on them. Everything is available online, past sales. I would look at how they present their current listings, how they market it, and, and just research the person in general. Definitely speak to two or three to get a feel for the agents. Talk personally with them. Uh, you really need to make sure you're comfortable with the person. Um, selling a house is really a relationship between the agent and the seller, and each has to like as well as respect each other to make the, make the deal work. So you really have to be happy with who you choose. Excellent. Now, obviously, James, you're based in the uh, Naples, Florida area, and if somebody needs real estate services or they're looking for an agent in that specific area, what's the best way they can find out more information about you and how you can help them? Well, I'd, I'd love to hear from your listeners. Um, they can call me, obviously, directly. My um, number is 239-961-3973. They can alternatively, alternatively visit my website at jwbates.com or email at james at jwbates.com. Excellent. And James, obviously we want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come here today and share all your professional real estate experience with our listeners. And if you're listening and you want to learn more about James, obviously you can go to his website, like he said. Uh, also below this interview, we'll have a link to his site and any other contact information we have so that you can uh, see how he can uh, help you with your real estate needs. So with that said, everybody, until our next show, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.